This program will give you a basic understanding of the ammunition you will be using, as well as pyrotechnics you are likely to encounter during your training. You will not be using these pyrotechnics, but they may be used around you to simulate combat conditions. Canadian Forces pyrotechnics and ammunition are safe when used properly. However, the training environment is complex and dynamic. Not all circumstances can be foreseen, and all explosive devices entail some risks. The pyrotechnics used in training are not designed to kill or injure, but there are risks of which you should be aware. You need to be able to identify these items, know their dangers, and how to deal with each of them safely. The items that will be covered are smoke grenades, thunder flash, ground burst simulator, parachute flare, the surface trip flare, and small arms ammunition. With all pyrotechnics and ammunition, there are real-time risks associated with their functioning. There are also residual risks when they fail to function and for whatever reason are not properly disposed of. Never attempt to move or destroy a misfired device yourself. Follow the safety procedures, mark the area with mine tape, paper, or anything at your disposal and inform your supervisor or instructor so that the items may be disposed of safely. With all duds or misfires, remember and follow the four R's. Recognize the potential threat. Mark and retreat to safety if appropriate. Report the danger. And remember, if you didn't drop it, don't touch it. The C8 colored smoke hand grenade is typically used to indicate wind direction, to mark a target, or as a signaling device. The L83A1 smoke grenade is used to screen positions and movements. The body of the C8 grenade is light green, about 12 centimeters long and six centimeters in diameter. The cap is the same color as the smoke produced, purple, green, red, and yellow. The body of the L83A1 grenade is green, about 13 centimeters long and six centimeters in diameter. There is no cap as this grenade operates with a fly-off lever. Both the C8 and the L83A1 are deployed by hand. Initiation of the L83A1 is instantaneous. However, the C8 has a time delay of several seconds. With pyrotechnics such as the C8 and the L83A1 smoke grenades, there are real-time risks associated with their functioning. There are also residual risks when they fail to function. The majority of accidents involving smoke grenades occur when individuals pick up or disturb what appear to be dud grenades. Smoke grenades can spew extremely hot gases and particles, the bright area in this enhanced image. If a smoke grenade lands too close to you, look away and move away. Do not touch or attempt to move the grenade. In high concentrations, the smoke is toxic, so while there is no lethal radius for these devices, you should avoid prolonged exposure. If you're in a confined space like a foxhole or a tent, get out. Smoke grenades are dangerous up close due to the extremely hot gases and particles that they emit. As well, the smoke is toxic in high concentrations. Never attempt to move or destroy a misfired smoke grenade yourself. Follow the safety procedures. Mark the area with mine tape, with paper, or in some other obvious way. Then, inform your supervisor or instructor. With all pyrotechnics, remember to follow the four R's. Recognize, mark and retreat, report, and remember. If you didn't drop it, don't touch it. The thunder flash is used to simulate battle noises during training. It is 20 centimeters long, brown with black markings. 
This device is ignited and thrown by hand. The thunder flash is not lethal. However, there are some hazards. Within 10 meters, the explosion is loud enough to cause hearing damage. A small sub-assembly may also be projected, creating a missile hazard within 30 meters. Your issued eyewear will protect your eyes from this hazard. The effects of the thunder flash are amplified in confined spaces. If one lands near you, take quick action. Turn away, protect your ears, and move away. Do not touch or attempt to move the thunder flash. The thunder flash poses a risk to your hearing and to your vision. In a confined space, these risks are increased. Never attempt to move or destroy a misfired thunder flash yourself. Follow the safety procedures. Mark the area with mine tape, with paper, or in some other obvious way. Then, inform your supervisor or instructor. With all pyrotechnics, remember to follow the four R's. Recognize, mark and retreat, report, and remember, if you didn't drop it, don't touch it. The ground burst simulator is used to simulate artillery or mortar fire, thus providing added realism to field training. This device is often referred to as an RD Sim, short for artillery simulator. It is 18 centimeters long and five centimeters in diameter. White with black markings, the complete simulator assembly is made up of an explosive and a fuse igniter. It is thrown by hand. This is a very powerful simulator. It is not a grenade, however, there is a missile hazard, mainly from gravel, sticks, and similar objects lying nearby. Anyone within 35 meters may be struck by burning fragments. The RD Sim is not for use in confined spaces. Within 15 meters, there is potential for hearing damage. At close range, the blast pressure is significant. Should a ground burst simulator land too close to you, take quick action. Take cover and protect exposed body parts, especially the face. Do not touch or attempt to move an RD Sim. The ground burst simulator is dangerous due to the risk of projectiles and the blast pressure should one explode near you or in a confined space. Never attempt to move or destroy a misfired ground burst simulator yourself. Follow the safety procedures. Mark the area with mine tape, with paper, or in some other obvious way. Then, inform your supervisor or instructor. With all pyrotechnics, remember to follow the four R's. Recognize, mark and retreat, report, and remember, if you didn't drop it, don't touch it. The parachute flare is a lightweight illuminating device used for nighttime operations and training. The launching unit is olive drab with white markings. It is 33 centimeters long and just over four centimeters in diameter. The rocket assembly is aluminum. It launches the illumination flare in the aim direction. The illumination flare is launched 600 meters into the sky, ignited and deployed with a parachute. 
The flare produces a very bright light for up to 30 seconds. The flare is a dangerous projectile when launched. Don't stand in front or behind the person firing the device. The flare's light and the heat it produces are intense. The parachute flare C7 is dangerous as a projectile when it is launched and due to the intense heat when the candle is burning. Never attempt to move a misfired or dud parachute flare. Follow the safety procedures. Mark the area with mine tape, with paper, or in some other obvious way. Then inform your supervisor or instructor. With all pyrotechnics, remember to follow the four R's. Recognize, mark and retreat, report, and remember, if you didn't drop it, don't touch it. The trip flare is designed to warn troops of nocturnal infiltration by the enemy without revealing the friendly position. When someone pulls, cuts, or stumbles on the wire, the flare ignites and illuminates the surroundings. This warns defensive troops of the approaching enemy and greatly improves visibility. The flare and assembly are olive drab in color. When triggered, it fires immediately and emits a yellowish light for about 60 seconds. The light is intense and can illuminate a radius of more than 250 meters. During your training, be aware that trip flares may be in use. If you find one, armed or not, don't touch it. If you trigger a trip flare close to you, look away and move away. Do not attempt to extinguish the flare. The trip flare is dangerous due to its intense heat. Never attempt to move or destroy a misfired trip flare yourself. Oh, oh, Back up. Follow the safety procedures. Mark the area with mine tape, with paper, or in some other obvious way. Then inform your supervisor or instructor. With all pyrotechnics, remember to follow the four R's. Recognize, mark and retreat, report, and remember. If you didn't drop it, don't touch it. The 5.56 millimeter round is widely used in the Canadian forces. The most common 5.56 rounds are the ball and blank. The blank round is identified by the rosette crimp at the tip. The risks when a ball round is fired from a weapon are clear. The risks when a round explodes outside a weapon are perhaps not so obvious. In a weapon, the gases that drive the projectile up the barrel are sealed from venting out the breech by the cartridge case, which in turn is supported by the strong walls of the breech. All the power is channeled up the bore. When the round is functioned outside the breech, the unsupported cartridge case alone cannot contain the pressure. These fragments are the result. The same fragmentation risk exists for blank rounds. Treat these with the same caution as you would treat the ball round. When fired within a weapon, a blank round does not carry the same risks of penetration as a ball round. But there are risks. Small burning particles can be projected up to 20 meters. At close range, the blast pressure can severely injure, even kill. Whether loaded with ball or blank, never point a weapon directly at anyone near you. Ball and blank rounds are never used at the same time. However, they may be used at different times in the same location. This reenactment of an actual incident highlights the risk. A magazine loaded with ball rounds was found during an exercise using blank rounds. Moving. To minimize the risk of mixing ball and blank rounds, there are control measures that must be strictly followed. Every individual loading magazines must inspect each round to ensure they are in fact blank rounds. Blank ammo should be loaded into magazines during daylight to ensure that ball ammo is not loaded by mistake. If blank ammo must be loaded at night, white light must be used, again, to ensure ball ammo is not loaded. 
always use a blank firing attachment or BFA. Both 5.56 ball and blank ammunition will fragment if functioned outside a weapon. With blank ammunition, small particles may be projected at close range. At very close range, the gas pressure from the muzzle can be lethal. Ammunition and pyrotechnics used for training purposes in the Canadian Forces are safe when used properly. However, there are always risks associated with the use of ammunition and explosives, even with training versions. With pyrotechnics and ammunition, there are real-time risks associated with their functioning. There are also residual risks when they fail to function and, for whatever reason, are not properly disposed of. Never attempt to move or destroy a misfired device yourself. Follow the safety procedures. Mark the area with mine tape, with paper, or in some other obvious way. Then inform your supervisor or instructor. Finally, with all pyrotechnics, remember to follow the four R's. Recognize the potential threat. Mark and retreat to safety if appropriate. Report the danger and remember, if you didn't drop it, don't touch it.